station KHTS. Uh, this is Amber Raskin, and I am here as today's host for SCVI Charter Schools Our Way on the Highway. Thank you for tuning in. Um, as uh, founder and uh, CEO of SCVI and Eyelid Schools, I'm here um, along with uh, an alumni and our college counselor, Chris Nilsson. Um, Chris, thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. And Samantha, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Sa uh, Samantha also, in full disclosure, is my daughter. I'm very proud of her, and I'm very proud to say that she was the inspiration um, more than 10 years ago for founding SCVI. Um, when I was a mother and not in education yet at the time, um, I was looking around for an option and wasn't seeing something that fit my needs and was proud to uh, to get a school going for Sammy at the time. We'll talk more on that later. But uh, first, I'd like to bring, uh, bring the conversation around to Chris and discuss, um, d discuss the school. It's kind of a small school, right? Can you tell us a little bit about what the feel and culture is like there? Sure, sure, it's, it's great. It's, we have about 230, ninth through 12th grade. And the smallness of it, it, it's like a family. And that's what I found in coming to SCBI. And we can spend a lot of time with the kids, give them a lot of that personal attention that I personally think every high school kid needs. Tell me more about that. What's it? Uh, I know you don't live locally, so your your own kids go to a different school. Um, but explain to me what um, what the differences is, is that you see and what the benefits of being in such a small environment are. Because uh, let me just give you a few of, t of the points I'd like to hear about, which are I know that there's a lot of kids that that feel like they might be missing out at a bigger school and um, because they can offer more programs and more um, more amenities is what I call it. So why would somebody choose SCVI and what, what's the benefit to the small environment? Well, personally, I think that every learner or student can benefit from a small environment. Um, you're right. I do live in Simi Valley and commute, and my younger daughter right now is at a big public high school. And if, if I could take her with me on travels, I would, um, but she likes to be in the community, and community is very important. Um, but I honestly don't hear her talk about her school in the same way and passion as our kids talk with me on a daily basis. So having the ability to not feel anonymous, to be able to... Um, meet people, have relationships with your facilitators, I think is so important for building that self-esteem and that confidence for kids that I think they all need. Can you tell, give us some examples uh, uh, of some of the comments that the kids at SCVI High School say about uh, what they appreciate? They really appreciate the creativity that they can bring to the table, which is definitely something SCVI fosters in the kids. Um, projects, personal projects, I think activities and experiences that they would not get at a bigger high school. Being able to talk to any facilitator, to spend time with them even after hours, I, I think is, is awesome. That's great. I, I always like to... Um um, demonstrate, especially when I give tours, uh, that we talk about the the good things and the things we're still working on. So what are some of the reasons somebody would choose not to go there? I think for some kids, um, we, we, have, we definitely have a sports program, but there are some high schools in our area that definitely have stronger programs, so they might go there for sports. Um, some kids, you know, maybe have been at a small school, and they think that they want to go to a bigger school with more people, um, but I think when they get there, they find that that's not, you know, grass is always greener sometimes, and I think they get there and think, hmm, maybe this wasn't such a great choice. Yeah, I often tell uh, my, my own personal kids and other graduates of our school that they won't really see the benefits of being at a small school with that personal attention until they're in their 30s and 40s and maybe when they have their own kids because now for the benefit of being older and a little wiser as an adult myself I and I mean not that they're not adults when they graduate but you know when we learn more as we get older um, that I realize wow that really gave me a good foundation um, that you don't have that that pep rally <laughs> my, may it's fun it's a good time but what I feel my own kids have learned by having that hands-on attention and that individualized um, mentoring really from the staff is gonna go so much further for them in life um, and again it's not for everybody and so a lot of people have a lot of support already so they don't necessarily need that but I'm personally grateful that we've been able to make that happen how, how many kids um, are at 
at SCV, how many high school kids? There's about 230, 9th through 12th, and I do make it a point, as much as I am, part of my job is college counseling, I do um, realize that after high school there are different paths, just as there are different high schools for everyone, especially different college, there's that college fit. So starting in ninth grade, um, even 8th grade in middle school, I talk with them about the idea of what they want to do when they get out of high school. And so it's very important in ninth grade that the kids understand maybe kind of what classes they need to take and how well they need to do in them um, because their goal may be to go to a four-year school. And that's what's great about SCVI is we are an A through G school, which means every kid that graduates can apply to a four-year school if they choose to do so. That's great. And then we also have, so we have a lot of kids that have gotten into some great schools. Can you tell us what some of those are? Sure. Yeah, what I'm really happy about this year is I kind of promote those small liberal arts colleges because we're kind of a small liberal arts high school. And um, last year, as as in our um, studio today, we have Sammy Raskin who went to Sarah Lawrence. This year, our seniors are going to Loyola Chicago, Columbia Chicago, Westminster, um, you see Santa Cruz, Washington State, Embry Riddle. So we have Agnes Scott in Georgia. So we have a lot of kids that are venturing out of California and going to some of these awesome schools that maybe you haven't heard about. And then there's some that are uh, have chosen to go to larger schools because they said they have a small, um, they had a small school experience in high school and now they feel ready for a big one. So I I happen to know because one of them is a friend of my daughter's. Uh, one's going to NYU in the uh, Tisch. Tish, I don't remember the exact name, Tish Department Tish, mm-hmm. uh, for the art, theater arts. And um, so she that was a hard program to get into, and she got into that. And we have another one going to UCLA, correct? Yes, actually, um, Veronica, she has an athletic scholarship for diving. And we don't really have diving at SCVI, but it's incredible with our program that you can do so many things outside of school um, and still kind of get recognized for that. So she'll be going to UCLA, which is kind of a bigger school. Um, but some kids are ready for that, and some kids need a smaller environment and that's okay. Yeah, I'd love to have her on the radio sometime because she so, speaks so eloquently about why she chose SCVI, even though she could easily have gone to any other schools and, and been successful and clearly going to UCLA. Go ahead. She had a great – I loved her speech um, at graduation, and it's it's very true, and I would love – she's actually going to China as well mm-hmm. with that opportunity with UCLA, so I would love to hear how her journey is yeah, in the our future. Whole, our graduation always makes me very proud and inspired because our kids speak so eloquently, and she definitely was one of them. Um, speaking of sports, I know you touched on that we don't have as many sports as the bigger schools, but we do have some, right? Oh, we do. And actually, we're starting swim team next year, which is new. We actually have baseball, softball, soccer, volleyball, basketball. So we have a lot. And I think the cool thing about SCBI – Um, is if you've never played a sport, you can still come out and try out. And it's okay. We have talent. We have kids that it's for their first experience. And I think that's awesome that they can all kind of be together, and you can actually learn a sport in high school rather than having to be an expert at it coming into high school. So you get to try them out. I know my son is starting out. He's going to be in 10th grade, 11th grade next year, and he signed up for soccer. And he's just played it off and on and dabbled. He doesn't necessarily know how. So I'm pleased that he's going to be able to be on the team and play just because he wants to. Um, that, that makes me happy. Me too. Um, and speaking of the, of sports and starting new sports, um, there's another club that I – there's somebody that's asked me to mentor them in starting a sailing club next year. That would be awesome. So um, so it, I, I find that it's interesting to s- that you are able to start new clubs, which is really great, a really great experience to know that you can start something from scratch. Uh, Again, I think a huge plug for SCVI that because of our environment, we definitely encourage kids to, you know, get the reins going and and start their own clubs, which at maybe a bigger school, it's really hard to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so another thing that I'm, I, I talked about, the, the, the student that asked me to mentor him to start a, a sailing club, and I'm not a sailor. I don't know how. I just know how to start things. <laughs> so I think that that's why he's asking me to, to help him. But that, he's going to do it for his 10th grade personal project. So oh. tell us what the personal project is. The personal project is something that all of our 10th graders um, do at SCBI, and they pick a passion or an interest that they would like to talk about, kind of explore, possibly a passion they want to pursue after high school and it's basically a year-long guided journey of kind of finding out what their passion is and then being able to present it at the end of the year um, to to all of our learners at SCBI. 
It's yeah. pretty cool. Some of the really cool ideas have come out of personal projects. So that's an interesting point. Um, Samantha, um, you, are, you, you are an alumni of SCVI, and you go to a smaller arts college now in New York, Sarah Lawrence. Uh, tell us about your personal project. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My personal project was... Um, it was uh, special effects makeup, and it wasn't something I ended up exploring after college, but it's definitely a skill that I, I love learning. It has been really useful uh, in my endeavors with theater and um, the arts, and uh, exploring a new skill was such an amazing experience for me. I always talk uh, so much about the personal project because I just I loved it so much, and I thought it was the most incredible experience, and it really like uh, helped me find my passion for the arts. So you, uh, I just happen to know a little bit about you, um, that you, uh, you were so excited about the personal project, which, by the way, came from International Baccalaureate, which is a program we offer. It's a very rigorous program. It's, uh, we don't offer AP or honors classes, but we do offer IB, which many people consider to be far deeper and more rigorous than, than AP. And um, so you did, and we do 10th grade personal projects, which we don't offer IB until 11th and 12th grade, but in 10th grade, we still adopt the personal project philosophy because they're getting ready for IB. So I happen, ha since I have a personal connection with you, I happen to know that you uh, were done with all of your hours, because there's a certain amount of hours required for the personal project um, during the school year. You were done before you even started 10th grade? Yeah, I, I was so excited for the personal project in ninth grade that I started in uh, I worked all summer long on researching and, and starting to like buy supplies and fundraise for those supplies and start experimenting with makeup. Um, and I ended up having around 300 hours for my personal project. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Wow. Very. So, um, so that makes me think of research and starting something up. I want to ask you a little bit about something else that was not a personal project, but that I know you did something in middle school and high school, which one of the things as a mother and a founder of SCVI that I, um, I'll just say brag about with Sammy is that she, not only does she go to a great school and she was comfortable going across the country to New York, um, but more than the college, because I, our world is changing so much and education is changing so much, we don't really know what's going to happen. But what we do know is that entrepreneurial skills are, are really important. So that's what we focus on at SCVI. That's what we want to teach. So what I say often is how wonderful you've done, you, you, uh, how how successful you are and how wonderful all the wonderful things that you've done but what's most important to me as a mother and a founder is that you started businesses in junior high and high school can you tell us about that yes uh in junior high i started my first business which was um a character party business so basically um i got a group of girls together and we started fundraising for some costumes and we all dressed up as princesses and we would go to children's birthday parties and children's events and it was something i was really passionate for a really long time because i really love children and working with children um so we would come in and we've actually come into scvi a couple times and read in classes and and met with children and it's just such an amazing experience to have and I, I'm so lucky to have have uh, support through SCVI and uh, in helping me with my endeavors and starting businesses. <laughs> Tell us about the second business you started. My second business start, was started two years ago. It's called Crossroads Theater Company and uh, I'm still continuing that today. And um, Why did you start that business or what was that around? It wasn't the personal project. No, no. Uh, I am very passionate about theater and I've always been very passionate about theater and acting. And um, something I found was um, I, I've been doing theater at two different programs. I did it at SCVI, and I had also done it at um, Teenage Drama Workshop in uh, at CSUN in Northridge. And um, what I, I was so passionate about youth theater and uh, having connections between um, young adults and teenagers and adults in the professional world. So something I really wanted to do was um, foster those professional relationships and have an opportunity for young adults to grow in the theater community. And um, also just provide more theater in the Santa Clarita Valley and provide different theater because um, there's a, a, there's so much there's so much arts in the Santa Clarita Valley and it's so beautiful to watch um, but I always think it's good to have a little bit more <laughs> was it connected to school no it wasn't well, but but okay <laughs> but um, it, I, I ended up uh, 
turning it into uh, an economics project as well um, through Innovation Studios, which I was so grateful to do. It started off as just a passion project, and my passions were then able to int uh, be integrated into my learning. And uh, I was able to learn economics and English through the lens of this business. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I know that we focus on at the school, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about that, Chris. Um, I, I'm interested in um, in what other internships kids have done and what other real life experiences our kids get. Um, not just Sammy, but I know that there's many kids at the school that have started businesses and ha and continue to do internships and externships to learn more to get more real world experiences. Do any come to mind? Sure. Um, well, I, one. One of our learners, she actually volunteered at the Gentle Barn, which is actually one of the cool places out here um, that we used to take our kids when I worked at Pinecrest. Um, and getting that experience, I think some of the kids work, which is awesome, but I think they find maybe that it was their passion or like Sammy had briefly said that maybe it wasn't and high school is the time to kind of explore different things before you have to get out in the real world and, and have be married and a mortgage and all those kind of things and I think a lot of our kids have found that opportunity and said, hmm, I think I'm going to go a different way, which is okay. And that's what I love about the internship um, is being able to explore a lot of possibilities and then make a decision. Kids, you know, if you ask most kids what they want to do after high school or, or if they want to go to college, they really don't know. And that's okay. And I let them know that that's okay because high school is that time to look. And even in college, that is the time for exploration. I love promoting college choice to these kids as an adventure. Yes, you get a degree, wonderful. Yes, you get exposure. But think of all the people you meet, all the ideas that come to you, the relationships that you create. You know, Sammy going all the way to New York, another one of our awesome graduates, is so brave and so amazing that that's the kind of environment that we provide at SCVI for those kids to feel comfortable in, in doing that. Yeah, I um, I felt that way. I it, I didn't get much exposure in high school to many things, and that's one of wh one of the reasons when my kids, when I had my own kids, I decided I wanted a different environment for them so that they could get a lot of exposure to a lot of different things and delve deep into what they may or may not be passionate about and uh, rule things out or find what they what they love. But I know for me, internships in my own life were key. I found out what I did want to do and what I didn't want to do through an internship, and. Um, so I'm wondering about, I, I know, I happen to know that um, that we have another couple of internships that I just want to spotlight We have because it, um, it's very connected to where we are today, which is uh, Reese Bowen, who is one of our amazing graduates that graduated with Sammy in the same year. And he did an internship here at KHDS, and then he got hired. And we have another one, too, um, Sydney Crossman, who also got an internship here and then got hired. And um, it, it's really a key to finding your passion and pathway. And um, I'm wondering about other internships in the community and how somebody might find out um, how in a business, if I'm a business owner, how would I get a hold of us to say I want to have interns? Yeah, we definitely um, want to reach out and definitely um, get get kind of a um, a group together for the kids. We actually have an internship. It is a graduation requirement for our seniors at SCVI, and it's it's a way for them to kind of explore. But I think getting in contact with those businesses, letting us know that we're here, um, I think that that's a great way for kids to be able to explore. And we do promote that. And we actually have an internship class that the kids do. That's wonderful. So, is there a phone number or email that they can call into? They could actually, yes, they could call me at SCVI. It is 605 705 4823. And you can email me at kris.nilsen at scvi k12.org. That's wonderful. Thank you. Sure. We are going to go to break now, so I hope you'll both stick around with us to talk a little bit more about the wonderful offerings and things that co are coming out of SCVI. Sure, I'd love You're to. You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. The city of Santa Clarita has so much going on this year. Be on the lookout for amazing events happening throughout the year, including the Cowboy Festival, concerts in the park, Thursdays at Newhall, and the Santa Clarita Marathon. There are also a number of fun activities and things to do year-round, including outdoor recreation, hiking and bike trails, adult classes, art exhibits, youth sports programs, and more. You can even sign up to be a volunteer. Learn more at santa-clarita.com. Your building sign is essential in getting customers to your location. Feathers can help get your business noticed. They walk you through each phase of your building sign project, providing special attention to detail and quality. 
feathers will give you a sign you can be proud of. Your building sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Feathers on Soledad in Canyon Country, across from the Edwards Theater. Or go to feathersphoto.com. That's feathersphoto.com. Drugs or alcohol abuse can tear a family apart. In Santa Clarita, just like everywhere else, it's an epidemic. The Way Out Recovery is here to help. Call them now at 296-4444 or visit them on the web at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. The Way Out offers outpatient treatment for adolescents, adults, and family members. The Way Out is compassionate, caring, professional, and confidential. You and your family don't have to suffer any longer. Call The Way Out Recovery now, 296-4444, or visit thewayoutrecoveryscv.com and make an appointment. Asking for help is the first step. Come join me, Arif Halvey, for Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Every Tuesday at noon, we uncover ways to help you manage your money, get out of debt, and prepare for your retirement. That's every Tuesday at noon on Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Are you not sure if you can retire yet? Listen to us and learn about tips for savings, retirement strategies, and so much more. That's every Tuesday at noon on Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour on your hometown station, KHTS. The popular Summer Beach Bus is back. The City of Santa Clarita is now offering rides to Santa Monica Beach on Saturdays and Sundays, now through September 2nd. Forget dealing with traffic or money for parking. Ride to the beach with ease on one of the city's comfortable, air-conditioned commuter express buses. And bring your beach chairs, coolers, and surfboards. Fares are only $3 each way for children and adults. $1.50 each way for seniors 60 years or older and persons with disabilities. For more information, visit SantaClaritaTransit.com. Your, your hometown station. Welcome back. Uh, this is Amber Raskin, your host for today. I'm a CEO and founder of iLead Schools and uh, SCVI Charter School. And in studio with us today, we have Samantha Raskin, alumni of SCVI and my daughter, and Chris Nilsson, who is counselor uh, extraordinaire at SCVI, who's taken our schools to new heights. Um, thank you for being here with us today. We've loved talking to you about what's happening over there and some of the amazing things you've been doing since you graduated, Sammy. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more? We touched on your Crossroads Theater before the break. Can you tell us a little bit more about the shows that you have done um, since it started um, through now and what it's a little bit about what it's like? Yeah, of course. Um, so after this summer, we'll, we'll have completed our fifth show. Um, and in the past, we started with a play called Lend Me a Tenor. Um, and then right after that, we did something called the Santa Clarita Valley One Act Play Festival, which was all original plays by people from the Santa Clarita Valley, produced by people in the Santa Clarita Valley. All the actors were from Santa Clarita. And it was such an incredible experience to see all those young artists come together and create a new piece of work um, that we actually partnered with SCBI uh, with. And there were people in their classes writing for our One Act Play Festival. And we ended up performing it at SCBI as well. Um, and then one of our more recent shows, we did Spring Awakening at the Main on New Hall, uh, New Hall uh, on Main Street. Um, that was our first venture outside of uh, performing at SCVI. And um, this summer, this tomorrow is our opening night of A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. And next weekend, we have the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Wow, that's a lot of shows for... How old are you? We're only... Uh, you. Personally. Oh, I'm 19. <laughs> and because you're the owner of the company, yes. right? I was going to say we're, our company's two years old. <laughs> yeah. Sammy, I just have to know. You just finished your freshman year yeah. of college and you're doing all this. How, how do you do it? It's, uh, it's difficult, but uh, I'm super passionate about it. And um, because I learned uh, those skills in multitasking through SCVI, I've been able to um, keep it up. But uh, I'm, I'm really grateful um, to, to have those skills that I learned through SCVI. And... Um, to be able to continue my company. So has it always gone swimmingly and been easy? No. Uh, we've uh, 
it's definitely been a learning experience. There's been, through every single show, there's been something for us to learn. Um, something that we learned through our first show is that marketing is really important <laughs> because you can have the most beautiful show and your actors can be great and the sec and the lighting and sound can all be beautiful and you can have the best direction, but if no one's there to see it, you're not a successful show. <laughs> That's that's great. What anything else? Any other lessons learned about I don't know budgets yeah, why, or why didn't you just yeah, give up? Of course. Got hard? Um, yeah, well, good, good question. Something I was I'm I'm so passionate about theater, and I have such an amazing team that whenever I've like wanted to give up, everyone has helped pitch in. Um, something that we were dealing with uh, this time around is there was some. Um, issues with our set and just everyone like everyone in the community grouped together and they brought in their friends and we all just we all help and that's what like the beauty of like such a small theater company is that everyone pitches in all the actors all the directors the stage managers they all help with everything and it's so beautiful to watch sammy do you think um so it sounds like with your successful company that you could have actually graduated from high school and maybe taken a year or have your own business already. So why was it important for you to attend Sarah Lawrence? See, I, I almost thought about doing a gap year, um, but I've always wanted to go to New York. And I actually found Sarah Lawrence my sophomore year of uh, high school and fell in love with it. And I didn't want to wait a second to go there. I just I loved it. It's um, a small liberal arts school um, right outside of the city. And it's just uh, it's so similar to SCDI, actually. I, I talk about that a lot. And I actually wrote my college essay on um, my experience with uh, my education in high school um, because it's it's so different than any other person I, I've met uh, at college. Um, and I just I fell in so perfectly that like fit, I fit in perfectly there. And um, all the curriculum just it came easy to me just because I, I know um, I, I was familiar with it because of SCBI, but uh, of course there's other challenges like being in New York, being across the country. So yeah. cool. So Although cool. Being close to Broadway ain't so bad, huh? No, <laughs> definitely not. No, New York is great. Yes. It's great. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the show <coughs> this weekend, the Doll, A Doll's House? Yes. Why did you choose it? What's the content? Isn't the content a little old for a young crowd? <laughs> yes, so uh, A Doll's House is by Henrik Ibsen, and it's a classic play. It was written in 1879, and um, it was actually originally written in Norwegian. So our translation is by Rolf Fagilde, and um, it's set in the Victorian era, and it's about this woman, Nora, and... Um, uh, what it means to be a woman in that era. And it's still so incredibly relevant today, which is why I, I chose it. Um, and uh, it was really important to me when I was reading it um, in my IB theater class at SCVI. Um, I fell in love with it. And I think Nora's story is so important to tell. And so many people read it in their English classes and theater classes, but no one ever puts it on. And I thought it was really important for a new audience to see this really influential um, and one of considered one of the first feminist plays. Um, she was one of the first uh, strong female characters in theater. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, can you tell us the dates and, and times and how you get tickets? Yes. So it's going to be at the Main on Main Street on tomorrow, June 22nd at 8 p.m. and Sunday, June 24th at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. You can get tickets at our Eventbrite. You can go to the Main's website and there will be links everywhere and also our Facebook at Crossroads. That's spelled R-O-E-D, Theater Company. Theater is spelled with an R-E, not E-R. And there are links everywhere to tickets. Um, and you can also come in uh, and buy tickets at the door if, uh, if you want to. So you're pointing out that Crossroads isn't a typo. It's a, no. It's a family name. Yes, it's a family name. Uh, it's okay. actually, fun funnily enough, um, a Norwegian name, um, uh, which is part Nora, of our yeah. – Yes. So uh, I think it's a fun connection to have to a doll's house because – can you tell us a little bit about the connection with the Maine and how that uh, how that happened? Because yeah. I don't think the Maine has been open for very long. No, right? no, it's pretty new. It kind of came about um, right the same, right around the same time that we were still growing. So um, when we were doing the One Act Festival, we were actually searching for locations, and um, the Maine had just opened, but they were not. Um, accepting people to come rent the space yet. So when we were doing Spring Awakening, um, it's a little bit of a raunchier show, and we didn't <laughs> think it would be a, such a good idea to have it connected to a school. Um, <laughs> but it's still very important, uh, and it's about um, uh, teenagers and um, 
uh, becoming adults and it's an incredibly important show. Um, so we, we ended up finding the main and fell in love with the space. It's this um, amazing, like, sort of black box space, but not really. It's, it's so unique. Um, and there's a gallery inside of, uh, or inside of the lobby. Um, and we just fell in love with it. And both of our shows, this weekend and next weekend, are going to be at the main as well because we just fell in love with this space. And we ended up being one of the first shows, the first theater productions to be in the main. And I, I think I heard that they have... Um, had a lot of shows since then. Yes. And so you were the beginning. Yeah, of, they told uh, us when we, we approached them for Doll's House that since then um, there has been so many shows that have come in and, and done productions at the main. That's wonderful. And what's next weekend's show? Next weekend is the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, and it is an incredibly fun musical, but it also is really impactful as well. Something our director talks about a lot is um, like a key word, empathy. Um, and... Um, that every person that walks into that theater can relate to one of those kids. It's actually about um, a group of 10 sixth graders performing at the spelling, or uh, competing at a spelling bee. And um, at first you think it's this fun musical, but then you can really get an insight into who these kids are and everyone can relate to one of the characters. That's beautiful. That's um, great. Tell us a little bit about what, what it's like to balance, or actually before that, who, who are in these shows? Is it all your friends? No, we have people from all over. We have people from um, the Valley, from the Santa Clarita Valley. We have people from Los Angeles, from Pasadena, from Glendale. We have it all over the L.A. County. Um, we have people from New York and Maryland working on it. Um, and um, it's a really beautiful uh, community experience. And... Um, it's been such a pleasure to work with all of them. And we have uh, – our age range goes from 18 to 27 to th into their 30s. We have so many professional relationships working with students and young adults, uh, and it's, it's fantastic. What do you think is the hardest thing about producing? Um, I think uh, m money is a huge hurdle for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's we're so passionate about our art and our community and um sometimes uh a fundraising is a little bit difficult but mm -hmm. um it's so wonderful to have everyone contribute and volunteer their time it's been really fabulous to have that community because without them nothing would happen that's yeah you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so community is something that is very important. Um, this is our hometown station. Um, they are hyper-focused on community. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit with Chris uh, some, uh, a little bit more about college because we did talk about all of these places kids are going far away. But I know we have a lot that go to College of the Canyons. Will you talk about that? Who goes? How do they go? Even kids who get accepted to four-year, they opt to go to COC. What's the benefit of that? And, um, and how, what's our partnership like with them? Sure, sure. Um, yes, a, a lot of kids, you know, coming out, uh, May 1st is usually a time where they have to decide where they want to go. What's nice about College of the Canyons, it's local. Um, I have to say at 18, when I was deciding to go to college, there is probably no way that I would have been able to leave California. Um, I think that's just an awesome thing for kids to be able to do. So I do talk about that with them, um, seeing if they are, if they could go out of state. Um, smaller liberal arts called private colleges, they do offer more money. And I think right there, that's that buzzword is financial aid. Um, my own daughter actually just went to Moorpark College. She just finished her two years. And I think I might have spent maybe $3,000 for college. And I think that that is definitely one of the, the major drives of going to a community college. You can kind of see maybe having those baby steps before actually going off to a four-year there's a lot of choices. You're, you can stay local. You can work. Those are all good opportunities. I've toured um, College of the Canyons many times, and it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. They have so many awesome programs. And the thing I like to talk to kids about is the trade schools they have, the certificate programs. I'm actually getting a certificate for college counseling right now. And, so and I only have to focus on those classes, not so much all the other things. But 
College of the Canyons also has a tag program where you can have a guarantee to go to a University of California or Cal State school. So kids can work towards that, getting their associate's degree to then move on to a four-year and transfer. And they can even take classes at University Center and not have to leave Santa Clarita if they want. That's exactly true. And they also have a College Now program. So for those learners going into 11th and 12th grade, they can actually take college courses there for free while they're in high school. So if they're going to SCVI, they could still take classes at College of the Canyons? Yes, they can. That's wonderful. Can they, uh, how, can, is there a limit? How many? There is a limit. I believe it's 11 units per mm-hmm. semester, but mm-hmm. I think what a lot of our kids are finding out, you know, having a small school, we definitely have the opportunity to study foreign languages is one of our two-year requirements. And if you go to COC and you take a semester of a foreign language, it counts as two years in high school. So kids, yeah. their eyes kind of light up and they have sign language and some of those things. So I've had some kids transfer in kind of late and didn't have that requirement and they were able to go to the College of the Canyons and be able to complete that requirement. Um, and it was it was an awesome experience for them as well. That's wonderful. Um, w- uh, did you have a recent event where you took kids over there and um, the kids that are going next year and helped them register? And- I did, and it was great. So I had some of my seniors who have already decided to go to College of the Canyons. And COC offers rush days where you can actually go there all day, and they have staff available to – you could do placement testing. They'll help you apply, help you pick classes. And so I took about 10 to 15 kids we were the only ones there so it literally was a personal experience that they provided and we were able to talk with those kids that were already there yeah and the outreach um director that she you know um being very supportive that's what I like being there with the kids we did a tour we kind of walked around on our own and looked at the library kind of give them a feeling because I think it's important um it's it's a big step graduating from high school it's one of those huge milestones yeah. and I like to kind of be there with them so I'm also told the kids hey if you need something over the summer mm-hmm. um I'm, I'm available so it's been a, it's been an awesome experience especially um learning more about College of the Canyons. Yeah, there, we have a, SCVI has a huge tie to College of the Canyons because basically there are roots at SCVI. Um, Sammy and my son went to, um, went to the Early Childhood Center there and they, uh, for, for preschool, and they, um, they, it was so, such a good fit. They had such a good experience there that when we got to kindergarten and elementary school, I kind of said, Where's the program like that? That's what I want for our kids. And that's really the, what informed the philosophy is of SCVI is hands-on, meaningful, um, you know, love and logic style learning, which is the, the discipline program we use at SCVI. And um, so it's very full circle that now um, we can – then later I did – I personally took classes at College of the Canyons, and many of our s- staff and kids do – as well, so I'm I'm very grateful to College of the Canyons for their partnership and support, and um, how how they are able to actually give a four year feel on campus there at College of the Canyons, um, and it it has that small environment that you're talking about that you're looking for a liberal arts college. So it, we're so lucky in our community to have you as a college counselor guiding uh, all of our our students in their next uh, in their pathway, um, to and to show the options, and we're so lucky to have so many. Wonderful wonderful options. Yeah, thank you so much, Amber. I This has been a life changer for me uh, working at SCVI. I actually have been involved in education for more than 20 years, and I worked at a private school, and at a private school, you provide that kind of attention. And when they closed, I had the ability um, of knowing a friend who got a job at SCVI. And when I came up and participate in Leadership Cafe, I was amazed. I could not wait to, to work at a place that I wish my older daughter had the opportunity to go to, even myself, coming from the San Fernando Valley and a big public high school. I would have loved to have had this kind of environment to, to do in high school. And so when I talk to the kids, I just want them to know what is out there. As much as community college is an option, I think one of my concerns is there's a 15% um, transfer rate. And I think it's just because it's hard to kind of manage college and work and do all those kind of things but it is the best place for some kids the best place to have a gap year or to get a job or work in the field like Sydney Crossman does um, or go to a four year which some of our kids do so I love being that person that guides them to find out what is it best for them it needs to be a fit and that's what's important. Yeah, um, the I do think that they have one of the highest transfer rates of colleges um, in the in the Los Angeles region, and um, I think that that's because they do such a good job. They also, I know, tra- do as you're taking getting a certificate. They do much, a lot of training 
for, uh, for the community. So they are very good at going to businesses and asking them what kind of training they need and providing that. So I, again, am very, very grateful for that. Um, I, I'm wondering about um, you talking about just going for it because you hadn't been in um, this You'd been in schools and education, but you had not done college counseling. And I know when we hired you, you said this is your dream job. So can you talk a little bit about the transition to doing something you didn't already know how to do and what that's like in an environment like SCVI and I lead schools? So when I came to SCVI, I think my dream was to be a high school counselor. And they had talked to me, Amber had talked to me about college counseling. And I said, sure, you know, college. Then I kind of got into the position and wow, um, there is a lot to know. And my first year, I did spend a lot of time learning the ropes. I had a great mentor and it kind of introduced me to this idea. When I went to, co when I went to college, I did not have a counselor that told me all of, that there was all this life out there. I had to go to a UC school. I knew nothing else. So in exploring this year, I have really taken it um, under my wing to any opportunity I have at a conference or a training in another state, I will rent a car and drive to colleges in the area. And yes, I focus on the small liberal arts or the colleges that change lives. Um, and I think I've just have a, re a renewed passion for college. And if anyone talks to me in my office, as, as walking in, you see there's banners everywhere. Because I, I just think it's, it's such a privilege for kids to be able to do this out of high school, to go somewhere new, meet new people, um, make connections. And I think that every kid has a right to do that. And I think they should have the ability to be able to see themselves there. I know that, you know, kids spend a lot of time in school. So with us and some of them that, that college talk isn't in the homes and they might be the first generation college attendee. So I think it's important to let them kind of explore and decide for themselves if that's for them. So I, I've literally, this is my second year and I am just amazed. There are 4,500 colleges in the United States. And I can tell you when I ask the kids about them, they think of 20 of them. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about how there's all these other ranges. Um, one of the new ones that I had found out about universe, um, Alfred university in New York. I've never heard of it. It is famous for ceramic engineering. So kind of finding those tidbits of information mm -hmm. has been so fun for me. That's wonderful. Uh, so you found a, a comfortable nurturing environment to try something new. Can you tell us about the environment for you, Samantha? Um, yeah, of course. I, I felt very much the same way. Um, all of my ideas um, for starting all these businesses were fostered by all of the SCVI facilitators and the community, not even just the facilitators, but everyone on staff was constantly asking about my company. Whenever, when I came and visited, cause we're doing, we use the, we use SCVI as a rehearsal space. I see all these facilitators and people I know. And um, they always are like, oh, what show are you doing? And so many people come and support us still, even after I've already graduated. And um, it just that supportive environment, like I, I never would have been able to start this company without the help of everyone at SCVI and all of the support I got there. So thank you so much for, for sharing about that. We, we're going to go to break. We'll be back and we'll hear a little bit more about Crossroads when we come back. Thank you so much. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. Who says nothing good happens after midnight? Denny's is best known for their breakfast served round the clock like the Grand Slam but you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner in a casual atmosphere 24-7. At Denny's, the lunch and dinner menu has a variety of appetizers, craveable burgers, salads, and entrees, along with the best desserts in town. Wherever you live in Santa Clarita, there's a Denny's close by. If you're pulling an all-nighter or don't feel like cooking, get into Denny's today. Good stuff is happening at Denny's. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. 
I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. With Facey Medical Group, good health is within your reach. Our doctors provide Santa Clarita's finest primary and specialist care at four convenient Santa Clarita locations. If you're looking for connected, convenient, personal care, there's no better place. We accept most health insurance, including plans offered through Covered California. Call 1-844-MY-FACEY for more information or to schedule an appointment. Your, your hometown station. AM 1220 and FM 98.1. We're in studio uh, wrapping up with Chris Nilsson, college counselor, and Samantha Raskin, SCVI alumni and um, young entrepreneur. Uh, Chris, you were about to say something about the staff and the transition when you came to uh, work with Eileen and SCVI. I was. Um, basically, I have never known so many awesome people to work with and how supportive they were me being new to my position in helping out. It really was amazing. Um, the other the other night, we actually had one of our, our IB theater facilitator, um, Ian, he is in a play down in Hollywood, and so some of us staff went down to support him, and we saw two of our current um, seniors there um, also supporting the play, and one of them got called on stage. So it's, it's just awesome that you can build those relationships, and I, I'm so grateful. Yeah, I, I've been very grateful that it's a, a very family, feel, there's a family environment. It feels like we all know each other we're all looking out for each other well each other's welfare um it's one big group instead of uh, a large you know 3,000 uh person high school with small groups inside Definitely. yeah I always say that SCVI is my second home and then everywhere everyone there is my family like all the staff everyone always says hi and and uh it, it's just a family yeah I feel the same way and going to Sarah Lawrence <laughs> has been the same as a mother I'll put my mom hat on right now um go, going to Sarah Lawrence um has been the same way because there, there's about there's 230 high schoolers you said mm -hmm. there's about a thousand um, next year probably up to about 1200 high uh, school kids um, from TK through 12th grade and Sarah Lawrence has about 1400 kids so it's it's really about the same although they have a lot more property than we right. do <laughs> they're much much older school so they get to spread <laughs> uh, spread out a little more um, so we're, we've been grateful for that and we've also been very grateful for the support from KHTS um, Mar uh, Marcio Laplante uh, wrote a beautiful article um, that speaks to our connection to the connection of, of, of uh, SCVI to the community and KHTS and um, this show has been a beautiful connection too. We've been, not only do we have interns here, but we also uh, get the luxury of being able to produce this radio show once a month. Someday we hope to produce it more often than once a month. But right now, because it is generally run and produced by students and staff, um, we were able to, and it changes every semester. There's new students who sign up for the class. We're still kind of uh, working on, on what that looks like. And over the summer, we're able to bring bring in alumni. So we're very pleased to have alumni spotlights all summer long. And let me just say, if you're interested in hearing or finding out more about SCVI, there's an open house coming up Thursday, July 17th um, at 6 p.m. in the Shakespeare Theater. You can and should RSVP if possible, but um, if you can't, feel free to just show up. Again, that is at SCVI in Castaic. Um, Thursday, July 17th at 6 p.m. I'm sure it's on the website, um, and if you just Google SCVI, you will find it. Um, and I'd like to give Samantha an opportunity to talk about her shows a little bit more. Um, get, tell us, there, there's one this weekend and a different one next weekend. Um, and I, I believe, as mom, I know that you're starring in one of them, but the other one not, but they're both through your company. So can you tell our listeners um, w how you, r remind them again, I know we said it once, but about how you get a ticket, where it is, and what the dates of the show are? 
Yeah, of course. Um, so this weekend we have A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen, translated by Rolf Schilde. And that is tomorrow, June 22nd at 8 p.m. and Sunday, June 24th at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And you can get tickets on the Maine's website or on our Facebook page or website. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Crossroads Theater Company. Crossroads is spelt with an R-O-E-D. Um there's ticket links everywhere on our website. There's events. Um, and you can also get uh, tickets at the door for our show as well. Um, Although I know it does sell out. It Last does. year it sold out, and there were some people who couldn't see it. So yes. P purchasing tickets in advance is recommended. Um, and I do know that you can go to the main um, website as well. So I think it's the main.org. Yes. Uh, and then next weekend we also have the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, which is a fun and impactful musical that is going to be June 29th at 8 p.m., June 30th at 8 p.m., and July 1st at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And you can get tickets all the same places. Wonderful. As we go into the end of the show, you told us a little bit about A Doll's House. Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose Putnam? I know that you said that it's relatable, but can you ex uh, elaborate on that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So um, for Putnam, we wanted to choose something um, very different than uh, A Doll's House because we wanted to represent a range of theater. Um, that's something um, we at our company are very, very passionate about. Um, and at first glance, uh, Spelling Bee seems like this like fun musical that's just like entertaining um but uh it really tells these the, such wonderful stories about these children uh and um gives an insight into who they are as people and it's it's such a beautiful journey and i, I don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil anything um but uh it's a it's a beautiful show and it's definitely worth coming to see for both shows so we hope to see you this weekend at the main at the doll's house and the following weekend seeing the say the whole title the 25th annual putnam county spelling bee at the main both uh, tickets can be purchased in advance um it is a very uh, a small theater so uh, they it really does uh it really does sell out. Um, thank you for listening. It's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful show, and I appreciate Chris and Samantha for being here with us. Um, you're listening to uh, our, your hometown station, KHTS 1220 and, and FM 98.1.